How are we doing on our potatoes? We still have 20 on us, so we're good for a while. To be fair, she didn't go to grad school. She went to... I walked into a pharmacy with a crowbar and took their doctorate's school. It's a, it's a far more efficient and cost-effective route, by the way. Uh, somewhat concerning legal ramifications, but fortunately, in Ellen's world, law enforcement has, uh, has, kind, of, has kind of not really been involved as much. Yeah, and long claws kind of I didn't I didn't actually follow through with my masters. Like I got my bachelor's degree and I was like, oh, you know what, I think I'll go into a um go into a master's for digital forensics. Got started. I had what I wanted to do. That you know I was like, this is the thing I want to do with a digital forensics degree, which is basically to be the person who when new malware comes out, be able to like reverse engineer it, figure out how it works, figure out what the implications are of it, how it gets around, ways we could tackle defeating it, all that kind of stuff. And incorrectly at the time, the professor I had was like, that's not a thing. Like, digital forensics, the only thing we do is when a crime is committed, we, you know, effectively collect the evidence kind of thing. And I'm like, oh, I don't think I want to live a life where all I'm doing is seeing, like, the worst society has to offer on their computer. I don't think that would be conducive to a long, healthy mental state of mind. You know, combing through the computers of abusers and all that kind of stuff to get cases against them. Like, yeah, I would start questioning everyone around me, and I best not do that. So, I did my first semester in the Masters, and then went, nope. I think I've had enough college. Burn and Son cashing in some push-ups, so I'm going to knock those out and I'll be right back. Yep, Mr. Wheatley. Now, granted, the specifics that the professor had said at the time were incorrect. That He was like, that's not a job, people don't do that, you know. Later on, I'm like, no, that was absolutely a job. Maybe the degree wasn't a good fit for the job, which I would actually dispute. But, still... That's neither here nor there. That's been a long time. Most of the giant heaps of bodies we had in this road should be long gone by now. Because um, I'm remembering that there's two books that I'm looking for. Uh, advanced Electronics and Advanced Metalworking. So I'm like, alright, well we'll just clear in the direction of the library. Or the bookstore again. Because frankly, it doesn't matter where I drive around Riverside if I'm still finding and killing zombies. We're still progressing stuff. It does sound like I've got one more day after this one to clear Riverside before the next day we'll probably be uh, be heading out because of the um, the impending storm. Okay, I'm going to try the Cherbourg, Cherbourg map of this game. Uh, good luck surviving. I have no idea what any of that is, but sure. I hope you have fun. Um, they're pretty underwhelming in all honesty. Like, the biggest, the biggest thing that's kind of annoying with the uh, snowstorms. Gotcha, it's France. Gotcha. Like, the most impactful thing of the snowstorm is it just, it makes it a little bit darker. So when you hit night, it gets really dark. Which is the reason I don't want to be out and about. It's just in case you run into trouble at night. Don't want to get caught. Mr. Lamprey deleting their points, going, These points weigh entirely too much. I do not want to get exerted, so we're going to drop them and be rid of them. I kind of wish when we had the giant heaps of bodies that I had actually taken the time to uh, shred a bunch of the clothes for thread. Because we're fresh out of thread and I don't... I don't much care for stopping to clean up just a couple of bodies. 
All right, so uh, Long Claw going, I have so many points, I don't even need these points. Look, look, I'll even torch these points. That's just how many points I have. Given that big old weird flex. And the weird flex is the best flex. Speaking of which, I'm going to drop some shoutouts. Because Longclaw plays a variety of games, including Project Zomboid. Excellent stream. Definitely recommend. Uh, does speak multiple languages and does point redemptions where you can get him to say stuff in different languages, so that's always fun. Meanwhile, Mr. Lamprey plays a whole lot of Project Zomboid. Um, has very similar stuff to like what we're doing. The current run, unless it's changed, is kind of the same idea of what we're doing, but with like little bit differences in nuance. Uh, so Mr. Lamprey is aiming to kill 1 million zombies in, I believe, under 10 years in-game. Um, the difference is where we're playing on 16x pop, no respawns, which will be somewhere in the area of a million something zombies. Uh, Mr. Lamprey is approaching it from, I believe it was insane pop, with respawns. But the goal is kind of the same of, kill a hell of a lot of zombies. Uh, and if you ever have questions about spears and their effectiveness, Mr. Lamprey can probably fill you in entirely. Oh, and you may have missed it earlier, I'm not sure if you were already tuned in yet, Mr. Lamprey. Uh, we had another close call where my vision was obscured and I couldn't see a zombie hiding behind something that managed to get a hold of us. So real salty about that at the moment. I've, I've come to the decision that, like, Indie Stone really needs to make an adjustment because that is not a, a feel-good way of running into a problem that doesn't have a reasonable counterplay in my, my mind. Because what happened was we had a zombie, you know, standing behind a vehicle like this, couldn't see it, got up to it, you know, zombie went for the move, tried to dash real fast, but because the zombie was already in motion, wasn't quite fast enough. And, like, the only things that we can do reasonably is, you know, I can yell or whisper yell or whatever, if I just assume it's there. I can always park facing like this. Yeah, and it sucks because, like... This this vehicle, it's not even that big, so it's like, oh, we should be able to see a zombie behind it. And I don't really have a better one, so I've not been doing that. There's a really good sports car we saw that has 507 horsepower engine. I might just take that and go back to just not using the big vehicle. Because I mostly took this one because it actually had some decent horsepower, like, I think it was 400 and some change, or 400. But yeah, it's not worth it. Luckily... Tailoring saved the day a second time. And before people were like, you have like the most ridiculous streamer RNG, it's like, no, with tailoring I had a, like a 90-something percent chance for a scratch not hitting. Uh, nope, these zombies are set to normal. It's like, basically, if I were to open, say, Apocalypse, and then just turn up the population to absurdly high, like as high as it'll let me go, and then multiple helicopters so the actual setting is quote-unquote sometimes and no respawn, that's basically what we're looking at. I also turned on the minimap and pre-populated the map, mostly so I could explain stuff to people. Like when they go, well, what, what about this? It's like, all right, well, let me let me show you on the map. Because I've already been all over the map at this point. Like, I've, I've seen the world. So it's difficult for me when someone's like, oh, can you tell me this about Louisville? It's like, probably not. Not without being there, and that's the last place we're going this run. So... Um, and we're also not running any mods that change gameplay in any meaningful way. So, like, I don't have any different loot tables, no additional weapons, no additional cars. Um, loot is just regular of, I think, I think rare is what the default is. Doesn't matter. It's the default. Oh, boycotting streamers that have zombies up to week? Eh. I actually don't know how much a difference it makes, to be entirely honest, because I've never bothered... Like, the advanced zombie lore, I think the only thing I've ever changed is when we went to do, like, sprinter runs. But otherwise, I pretty much leave that alone. Now that said, I could definitely see if someone's got their zombie set to just way too easy, it might not be that intent you know, entertaining to play. I 
How are the stats looking these days? They're looking pretty good. We, I don't like what does it. Uh, we are now at um, six fitness, seven strength. We started at zero, zero. Um, we are getting real close to nimble five, which is exciting. Most of our combat skills are six and seven with you know one or two outliers because I don't I haven't been crafting spears so axes and spears these aren't crafted that's what I found carpentry is maxed cooking's getting close uh, some of these other skills are getting up here finally uh, five and four for aim and reload that's just because like one or two gun rampages we did early on which account for maybe a thousand zombie kills of our 34 ish thousand zombies and their survival skills are kind of crap because we've neglected them greatly all right so we are just clearing Riverside, and we're making really good progress. As you see, I'm in the middle of downtown, and you're not seeing many bodies anymore. And this is at 16x pop. Uh, once upon a time, this road was almost, when I say literally covered every inch with bodies, I mean we actually almost died on our character because we couldn't get away from the bodies and got so sick we started dying really rapidly. I got down to about 10% health before I was able to finally get it under control. What, they get knocked down more easily? Uh, or are you saying if we make them weaker? I'll have to catch up. Um, I would guess so. Like, because my, my only guesses of what weaker zombies would be is one, they get knocked down easier, and two, they'd be less likely to have, um, like, you'd probably get more scratches and less lacerations and bites, that kind of thing. That would be my guess. Or they also have just lower life in general. But I thought, um, how strong they were and how tough they were were separate stats. Could be wrong. That'll be fine. Time to finally bust out. I think I had two spears we found since that crowbar. And we've actually got ourselves, when it comes to the maintenance skill as well as our, um, I'm not going to bother. Our main skill in that, we've gotten to the point where we're actually finding more crowbars than we're breaking. So that's a thing. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, it's, it's clearly that would be intended to make the game easier. Alright, it's got both spears out. A spare crowbar. Now, before we get too far, there's books in the back of this place. Um, and so I'm looking for advanced, I believe. Yeah, it's advanced uh, metalworking and advanced electrical. Mr. Lamprey says, Louisville is going to be intense with 16x pop. I've had three crashes today trying to clear the public library. Oh yeah, I that the thing I think that's going to work for me in that regards is I'm not going to be able to like just bully my way in. It is it is going to be standing back and just slowly working my way in inch by inch kind of thing. So I don't think at any point I'm going to be dealing with the um the full numbers as it were. So that should help. And I will catch up with chat. I'm just focused on trying to look for this book. There's the advanced metalworking. That's one of the books we want. The other one's advanced me um, electrical. Alright, so we had advanced metalworking, but no advanced electrical. Let me catch up with chat. Um, let's see. Maybe my perception is off because I'm still pretty bad at the game and often end up often end up fighting at the worst time. Drowsy, I'm going to come. Yeah, that, you have to be super careful. Uh, bad moodles make it easier, easiest fight hardest. And bad moodles begot bad moodles. Because you'll get tired and you'll start fighting, which will get you exerted, which will make you tired and exerted and all that. Um, let's see. Just Call Me Slake says, besides, 
What's behind the mindset of set the modifiers to make the game easier? I don't come to Twitch to see Hot Tub Bikini version of the game. So that's something I'll, um, not the Hot Tub Bikini thing. Like, that's neither here nor there in my book. But, um, like, one of the things we do on stream is I'll sit there and say, no matter what game settings you're playing as, if you're having fun, congratulations, you're playing the game correctly. Um, so we don't, like, we don't have a thing that says, oh, hey, you're not playing on hard difficulties or ever oh poo poo whatever streams can be entertaining for a variety of reasons some streams it's about you know doing hard challenges playing strong difficulties like all that some of them people like they almost role play and that can be very entertaining some people just the streamer themselves is very animated so even if they're not playing on a very hard difficulty even if like it's still a thing they can like kind of exaggerate the situation have a good time good laughs yeah um, and as far as what the icons are on the book, so I'm running a mod called Has Been Read. So if you see that red icon, that means I've not read that book. Um, there's also a yellow exclamation mark icon, which basically means I've started a book but not finished it. And if you don't see an icon, it means it's a book I've already read. It just makes it really easy for me to spot at a glance, like, this is, you know, these are books I'm looking for versus these are all the ones I don't. Because, like, in real life, I would recognize a book by cover, you know, if I've seen enough times, and be like, oh, I don't need to see that book. I wouldn't have to, you know, mouse over and go, oh, have I read this book yet? Oh, it says I've read 260 out of 260 pages. Yes, I have. Yeah, so I, I don't particularly have any issue with, like, an individual streaming who's not not doing the hard thing like when i play rimworld i'm not playing on like naked brutality or anything i mean naked brutality is a start i'm not playing with like 500 percent intensity any of that nonsense we're playing at um adventure story which is kind of middle of the pack difficulty and that's because one like i i very much enjoy rimworld and i played it on and off a lot but i don't stop and play it for enough time to get like super good at it and then also, I have, like, I'm known for not doing, like, cheese strats in any game. Like, I don't, I don't pick up whatever the meta weapon is and go, I'm going to use nothing but the meta weapon. Or in RimWorld, it's like, I'm not going to make the long, like, spiral pattern of traps that you force an entire raid through where you can kill the entire raid just about in nothing but traps. Or, you know, other cheese tactics that breaks AI pathing or anything like that. Uh, in this game, when you could use TVs to make impenetrable fortresses, I would not use a TV to make impenetrable fortresses. I don't even do the thing where you, um, I've only done it once on stream where we knocked down stairs to, to make a base secure, and that was because we chose some absolutely absurd settings in a high pop area. And it was one of those things like, I literally can't, can't survive without doing this. But generally speaking, I won't, I won't even use that tactic. I don't do burns. <laughs> oh, and it's good. Like, and that's, and one of the things I do appreciate about Project Zomboid is even the meta weapon has enough, like meta weapons, like spears and that, have enough downsides and enough prep you have to do. It doesn't feel like too broken. It's not like some games where it's like, what weapon are you using? Oh, I'm using the Tonkor because I can, you know, delete entire areas of enemies in individual shots, and it has no real drawback. Like, you know, whatever the flavor of the week is. You know, there's some games that are like, this is the indisputably superior weapon right now, therefore everyone should use it. Uh, long clauses. I like the mental image of mousing over a book in real life, though. Yeah. I don't partake. Like, I don't have any problem with it. Like, I I am someone who is completely down with the legalization of all that kind of stuff. Because, like, especially for stuff like pain management and all that, they're extremely useful. Because I definitely have known people who have suffered terribly. And, you know, other medicines and all that mess with them. So they, um, acquisitioned substances that are otherwise considered controlled. 
and uh, made it super easy for them to handle. But it's like, no, that's an illegal substance. Like, right, but this person's dying, you know, come on. I feel like they should get a pass. And frankly, even if they're not dying, I still don't think it's that big a deal. We have far worse that is legal. I'm also somewhat of the mindset of it's like if it's not hurting anyway, it's not anybody, it's none of your business. And if you didn't gather from the zombies falling down one after another, uh, spear slap. Considering I think we're only at four for spear skill, and we're probably one shot, you know, kind of averaging like every other zombie we're one shotting. Until I hit exerted, and then you know. The dreams fade. Yeah, or until the spear breaks. But I mean, we just went through, what, 20, 30 zombies? Spear's about half durability. Thirty-four? I believe it. Nice. Yeah, and I would say, um, and I know me and Lamprey have talked about this as well as a couple others, I, I do personally feel like spears need a tweak down. Like, they're a little too strong. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, oh, I wouldn't say I'd want them to nerf it or anything. Thank you for the follow, just call me Slake. I wish there was a safe place for me to sit down and recover my stamina. Because I want to use a spear. We don't really have the energy to use the spear with that many zombies. We'll be like high exertion by the time we're done. Alright. Yep, thank you. I've uh I very much enjoyed it. I also do have a habit of going through and explaining my thought process on stuff when I'm doing things. Um, this particular run in Project Zomboid hasn't been as conducive to that, because so much of it is, what are we doing today? Well, what we're doing every day, Pinky. We're killing zombies. In that general direction. And tomorrow, we're killing zombies. In that general direction. And the day after... Well, the day after is going to be rainy, so we're going to work on our, our tailoring a little bit. But then after that, we're going to kill zombies. In that general direction. Versus, like, especially early game, it's going, okay, I don't have all the things I need, I'm going to this place because, you know, there's a good chance it could, like, well, not guarantee me any of the things I need, it's got a little bit of a chance to give me a lot of the things I need. You know, and then when you start narrowing down what you need, you're like, alright, well, I, I want an antique stove, I know very specifically where I can find one. There's actually a good chance that once we get a bit later, I probably will end up being using the uh, the hunting knife almost primarily. You know, it's certainly not all in. But just because I'll have like no stamina use and I'll be able to just keep slaying. But um, we we have on this 
not this character, but we haven't run past, gotten ourselves to, I think it was like seven or eight short blade. And when you're not exerted and all that, you get to the point where you're like, I would imagine 10, and I haven't done this myself, but from what I've seen from, um, like Mr. Nice Gamer 88 did a run where he got super high on short blades because he was doing his works challenge. And he was pretty reliably one and two shotting zombies with the, uh, the short blades, hunting knife specifically. Because the whole works challenge was, um, for those unfamiliar with it, basically had, there's like a whole kind of mechanic behind it that every, I think it was month, he had to switch what category of weapon he was using and he had to get a certain, or was it weak? There was some period of time he had to switch what category of weapon he was using and he couldn't use any other categories of weapons during that time. And then if he failed to meet a certain quota of kills, whatever weapon he had been choosing would be quote-unquote locked. And so this whole thing, he had to he had to hit a certain quota of kills, he had to rotate what weapons he's using, so he's using a little of every weapon. Uh, and hey, Sugar, how's it going? And so it's a very interesting challenge. Like, I, I got, like, as well as challenges, like, ooh, I could see doing that, but it was kind of the overhead of keeping track of what weapons I could and couldn't use, and then usually I play with t too high of zombie pops for the challenge, because, especially early game, I, I can't choose a category, I need all the weapons, because I'm going to break them all. Like, we genuinely just flat out run out of weapons early game in these challenges till my uh, maintenance skill is up. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Mr. Nice Gamer said, still really want to see... Yeah, we read that one. Um, go on. Uh, Mr. Nice Gamer said, the run ended by falling through the mall roof. It was really easy mistake to make. He deserved better. Oh, I didn't hear that's how that run ended. Did he actually... I, I thought he had completed his challenge, though. Like, the um, his objective to, like... I can't remember, does it get to a certain number of kills or something like that? Or... Rotate through all weapons. I can't remember the exact goal yet. I thought he had reached that, but was still had the character and died. But I could be wrong about that. Because I know I popped in at different points while he was working on the challenge and chit chat with him, but I didn't see how it concluded. That is how so many deaths go in this game, though. It's like you'll have that, uh... Um, let me know when you have it before you post it, because I gotta give you permission to post it. But, um, once you have it, let me know, and, uh, I'll give you permission. For anyone who wants to check that, like, I'll check it after stream, only because if I'm going to watch a clip, like, I'd want to put up in the, you know, the primary thing and all that, like, actually set up a browser display and all that. January 1st. I assume January 1st in-game. Alright, give me one moment. Alright, you should be able to post it for anyone who's interested in seeing that, and I will, like I said, I'll probably check it out after stream. Just because I, I, I've made it a point that I've said this a number of times, I like try to avoid watching any type of video or whatever during stream. Mostly I trust people to do stuff, but, um, yeah. It is one of those things that all it takes is one person to be like, oh yeah, here's this video with this useful thing about, or someone tested this thing, like, oh yeah, let's check it, and then it ends up being, you know, someone making a racist rant video, or someone's just trolling or whatever, and that'd be thing. Or even then, like, someone was just rickrolling, it's like, oh, well now I've just played DMCA, protected music on the main VOD part and all that, and now I have to delete my VOD or I risk DMCA violation. So I just, rather than take any risks with it, I'm just like, yeah, there's a rule, we don't just, I just don't watch clips or videos during stream. Oh, I can imagine not. And that was, um, when we were playing multiplayer the other day, and I 
I think it was Nier was working on starting to like figure out a way to get onto the roof of the fire department is just like just so you know a lot of a lot of roofs in Project Zomboid aren't real so like just be super careful Um, with that clip, were you able to see what date they lived to? Yep, exactly, Mr. L Lamprey. I, like, the roof on, for example, the bait shack is a false roof. Hold that. We will never have stamina. So, like, to use the spear again. But, as you've noticed, because we've been using the knife, where we were exerted before, we're no longer exerted. Six months, two hours? Um, so we're at eight months. Yeah, he'd be past it. Six months would put him past January 1st. So that means he did complete the challenge he was aiming for, it's just then he died in a way that was very... Unfortunate. Gotcha. And I'm sure there's people who goes, that's entirely unrealistic. And all I can think back is to the place I worked retail. If you went, there was a second story in the building that almost no one knew about because they usually just kept it locked up and it was just storage. But it had a door that just opened out like onto where there should have been like a second floor but there just wasn't. So it was this door that just opens. You know, no lock or anything for it. So if you ever tried to walk through the door with any speed you would just immediately fall through, fall a story, probably break your leg if not kill yourself. So it's like, nah, that's realistic. Those exist. There are flagrant violations of, you know, all sorts of safety codes and all that, but, you know, that only matters if you get caught. And that was unfortunately before um, I knew properly how you report those kind of things. Because I definitely was a person at the, um, the manufacturing job I worked. Who you could anonymously report violations and I would do so all the time. Because it was like, it's one thing if it's some like minor violation or whatever. Like, whatever. But, you know not following basic safety procedures, having stuff that were like egregious code violations that were just begging for an electrical fire and stuff like that. I'm like, nope, I will. I will happily call that in so fast. I mean, I guess it's ticket that and not actually call. But I will happily report it so fast. Also, because the person who ran that company was a total jerk. Like, just the same thing as if I'm working at a company who does the whole, like, oh, we need you to work off the record kind of thing. Like, uh-huh, uh-huh, let me just, uh, let me just make a phone call over here real fast. And get that, that paper trail foreman. Uh, wage theft is theft. Oh yeah, I I was thinking, you know, you, you've got that door on the second floor. I am sure there was some lawyer who knew about that, just like salivating at the thought of, you know, some employee walking through that and just going, I smell the easiest court case of my entire career, that we're going to get this big name store to just 
fork out a fistful of money for such an egregious violation. It never happened. At least not that I'm aware of. It never happened while I was there. But I'm sure there's some lawyer just like going, oh please. Like, I like easy money. Because that's one of those court cases you take in front of the judge and the judge goes, really? Really? How much did you want? Alright, that's the only argument we'll have is, is, is the damages you're requesting reasonable or not? Like, that this company messed up is not on the table. That is, that is, they did. Oh yeah, I, I pulled that one all the time. I'm like, hey, if you want me to work overtime, like, all that, it's like, I'm gonna need you to, uh, to give me that in writing. Or, um, when it comes to, like, discussion about terms of contract and all that, I'm like, sorry, I need this to be in email, or I need it to be in paper. I need this in something that, like, I don't, I don't have a verbal agreement related to legally binding contracts. That is, uh, not a thing that's gonna fly. You're gonna have in writing what you're paying me, how many hours you're paying me for, like, what, what the, oh, what's the clause? Like, where you can basically get out of without obligations. Like, we're, we're having all of that in writing. Because I did have the one where I was being paid, um, contract for a position. That they wanted me to come to the weekly, or no, was, was it weekly or daily? It was, it was, they had their stand-up meetings, which is a normal practice for software dev. And they wanted me to attend these meetings. And they're like, hey, you know, I really need to attend these meetings. And I'm like, that's, I'm sorry, it's like, my contract only covers doing software development, that like, you come up with the requirements, all that kind of stuff. Like, I'm not, I'm not here to do your design and planning and all that. If you want that, we need to negotiate that time. Because, like, you're, like, I only have an obligation to you for about, I think it's like 16 or 20 hours a week or whatever, dev time. They're like, oh, well, we need you to come to these memes. I'm like, all right, well, just so you know, that's going to count into my dev time. And they're like, oh, no, it can't. Like, this is just part of the process. I'm like, well, that's unfortunate because my contract says otherwise, and my contract is legally binding. Versus you talking to me on the phone is not legally binding. And they're like, well, we'll let you go. I'm like, well, that's great. I mean, you paid me in advance, so if you just want to cut me loose, like, I'm, I'm paid. You don't get to take the money back. So that's... That's a you problem. And just the person be like, call me immediately. It's like, yeah, that's not gonna happen either. Oh yeah. Like, if we're talking about like design details and stuff, sure. We, we can we can have ourselves a phone call but if it's talking about anything about like compensation that type of stuff it's like no 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 we're, we're doing this where there's a paper trail we're doing this where if I got a lawyer up later I know I'm covered because the vast majority of times I've heard a person go I need you to call me it's like you're about to ask me something that you do not want to be put in a court of law, because you will lose. I see you, zombie. If you really don't mind, I would like to keep tearing these clothes without interruption. Fine, I, I, I get the hint. You want to be part of this? It's okay. Alright, you have yourself a good lurk there, uh, Lamprey. Gotcha. Well, good luck on uh, fixing your keyboard. Hopefully it's just like a cleanup kind of thing. Keyboards do get disgusting like that. And I'm basically just hitting these two spots where we had a bunch of bodies in one spot. Not gonna go running the whole way up and down the street or anything. If it wasn't dark, it's almost like, ooh, we could just go up to the hotel and sleep in one of these rooms. I'm like, ah, uh, I have a feeling there's gonna be a hoard or two up there. 
in a dark area I can't see, with corners I won't be able to get around kind of thing. Maybe, maybe we just go home where we know it's not going to be a problem. I believe tomorrow in game we're still okay. The day after in game is when the storm is going to start and we want to be back home by. So tomorrow in game we should still be able to uh, deal with that. Oh, is, uh, is pineapple pizza showing up? Is that what you're trying to hint at? Pizza firewall? Ascended metal? Otherwise I don't know what the pizza firewall is about. Oh! No, you're probably talking about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles van. Either way. Did they have a pizza firewall joke in Teenage Ninja Mutant Ninja Turtles? It sounds like a thing they would do. It sounds like something Donatello would totally say. It also sounds like the kind of joke that they, uh, a person who's not tech savvy, like, when I say this, I mean for Donatello and Ninja Turtles, for them to be like, oh yeah, that's like a legitimate thing, and be like, no, it doesn't make sense. I I love when shows do that, by the way. When they use, or I, not even shows, like, when people use stuff that's very clearly not a reasonable application of something, and they just go with it. It's so like people are when they're going, we can use blockchain to, you know, ensure voting integrity. It's like, no, you can't. None of what you just said is a real thing that makes sense. Like, none of that makes sense.